Main Articles Imperial Military, Imperial Army, Imperial Navy and Stormtrooper Corps. Look on our new military not as trespassers or interlopers, but as gatekeepers, here to shore up the Emperor's vision of a pacified and prosperous galaxy. Wilhuff Tarkin as the direct successor to the Republic military, the Imperial military comprised vast numbers of warships and countless soldiers. One of the most recognizable warships was the Imperial-class Star Destroyer, and the mere sight of one usually was enough to bring a troublesome system in line. Rule through fear of force rather than force itself was the driving philosophy throughout the imperial military, epitomized by the Tarkin Doctrine. Bolstered by the near-limitless resources at the Empire's disposal and loyalist companies such as Tame and Back, Borstel and Phylon Transport, corporations such as Kuat Drive Yards and its subsidiary Kuat Systems Engineering produced many of the New Order Star Destroyers, as well as the formidable All-Terrain Armored Transport, which was frequently deployed at hotspots throughout the galaxy. If it meant securing victory in a battle, the Empire was often fine with civilian casualties. The all-terrain armored transport walker became to be feared for its formidable chin-mounted heavy laser cannons, while lighter walkers such as the all-terrain defense pod featured a single laser cannon able to be rotated independent of the walker's front-facing direction, and were deployed primarily to protect Imperial military interests on backwater worlds. Blast Tech Industries was the primary weapons producer for the widely used E-11 medium blaster rifle. The Aratech Repulsor Company manufactured the 614 Ava Speeder Bike, commonly referred to as the Imperial Speeder Bike, which would eventually be replaced by the 74Z. CNR Fleet Systems produced many of the Empire's Imperial TIE Fighters and variants, such as the TIE Advanced V-1 which was originally unveiled on Empire Day and featured dual chin-mounted laser cannons and the ability to launch warheads such as the XX-23S Thread Tracker. The TIE Advanced X-1 naturally became the next evolution of the deadly V-1, as well as the preferred craft of Lord Vader. In addition, the Empire inherited the military assets of the defunct separatist movement, the most notable of which was the Death Star. Leading the Imperial military were highly trained admirals, generals and moths who were instructed at the numerous Imperial Academy complexes throughout the galaxy. Several veteran officers also formally served in the Galactic Republic, with decorated members such as Wolf Ularan. During the sixth year of the Emperor's reign, 20 moths answered directly to the Imperial ruling council. The title of Grand Moff was specifically created for Wilhuff Tarkin while other moths such as Tian Jergerid and Thurban sought to increase their reputation with the Emperor. Some ambitious Imperial officers even supported insurgent activities with later plans to betray and destroy them in hopes of a promotion. It was not uncommon for high-ranking officials to maintain private investments, with Hiram Zatair owning large plantations and a vineyard on Naboo, and Cassio Tag being a member of the House of Tag, which held ownership of Tag Co. and its mining facility at Lucazets. The Imperial Army and Navy were responsible for carrying out the Empire's military operations across the galaxy. Ostensibly dedicated to maintaining law and order, Imperial military forces came to be feared and fled from. Perhaps the most ubiquitously visible element were the Imperial stormtroopers. These faceless soldiers were the enforcers of Imperial order, often exercising a shoot-first policy. Following the Battle of Endor, the Galactic Empire's martial forces began to suffer both resource and personnel shortages, ultimately forcing untrained and untested recruits to fill the front lines in the Imperial war effort, while the once mighty Imperial Navy of 13 superstar destroyers was reduced to one, the Ravager, which was ultimately destroyed during the Battle of Jakku. After the end of the Galactic Civil War with the signing of the Galactic Concordance, the mobilization and training of stormtroopers was prohibited. Tarkin noted an institutionalized suspicion within the imperial military, which he believed was used as a tool by Emperor Palpatine to control the various members of the Empire and its numerous organizations. There also existed an intense fear of the Emperor and Lord Vader, mainly due to harsh punishments, such as death or torture, if a task was not completed in time or resulted in failure. Imperial patrol transports and stormtroopers were often utilized as the local police force for numerous worlds, while off-duty personnel could frequent local venues and neighborhoods after signing out of their local garrison. The euphemism, off-base, recreation, was used in the imperial military when referring to the visiting of various mistresses or cantinas by personnel, while out of consideration it was common for duty officers to ask no questions about such escapades. Members within the Imperial Army believed that those stationed farthest from the Imperial Center were deemed less important to the New Order, 
causing many to resent deployments on remote worlds such as Belderone. The nascent empire conducted numerous atrocities, often resulting in genocide owing to the empire's humanocentric tendencies. On Geonosis, the empire sterilized the planet's native Geonosian population with heavy bombing. The Lassat homeworld of Lassen was ecologically destroyed by the later banned T-7 ion disruptor rifles, and the entire species was almost wiped out. Furthermore, to make advances in bio-warfare, Vice Admiral Perwin Gerd tested ancient diseases on captive worlds, raining sickness from suborbital battleships. A vast distribution network existed within the Empire, with numerous warehouses on various worlds holding thousands of biological agents. Biological testing was conducted on planets such as Coyote or against primitive indigenous populations and Wookiee slaves. While most research and development went unhindered, a few initiatives went out of control. On Dandoran, the accidental release of a highly contagious virus under the codename Project Blackwing, a clandestine effort seeking to uncover the secrets to immortality, ultimately led to an outbreak across the planet.